In this video, I'll showcase the Spawn Default Token script, which allows you to automatically spawn party members on the map, monsters, and magical effects. Note that this does require a pro subscription in order to use the API. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So let's start out with spawning our party. Anytime you set up a new map, you go in, you get your dynamic lighting set up, you add the monsters, your notes, whatever, and then you need to remember to add the party to the map. And if you have a lot of party members going into the journal and dragging one, two, three, four, five, six characters out every time can get a bit tedious. So let's speed it up. We're going to use spawn default token to add the party to the map. Now, the way you do this is you place a token on the board and then the other tokens get spawned around that token. So let's start out with a real simple example here. I'm just going to put a D12 on the board. All right, so I drag that out. That will become my spawn point. And so now what I want to do is spawn one of my characters. So what I'm going to do is swing over this notepad window here. And the command we're going to use here is exclamation point spawn dash dash name Grolf, where Grolf is the name of one of the characters I have in my game. So there he is. So I want to spawn Grolf. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this command here, and I'm going to put it into the chat box, and we'll select our token, run this, and there we go. Grolf has been spawned. But you notice that Grolf has been summoned directly on top of the D12 token, and I'd rather he be placed off to one side. So let's delete Grolf here, and we'll do this again. What we're going to do now is add another parameter to this command called offset. And offset allows you to specify how many squares left, right, up, or down that a particular token will be placed. So we want Grolf to appear one square to the right of that token. So we're going to use offset one comma zero, and that's going to place him in this square right here. So let's just see that. I'll copy this, come down here, paste. Always make sure you have the token selected when you run this. And there we go. Now Grolf has been set to the right of the D12 token. If we wanted him to come in to the left, then we would make this a negative one, meaning it would be moved one left of the token. So negative numbers on the X axis move things to the left. Positive X values move things to the right. If you want a token to come in above or below, we would adjust the Y value here. So to have Grolf come in one square below that D12, it would be zero comma one. And if we wanted him to come in above the D12, it would be zero comma minus one. And just to prove that works, let's just go ahead and we'll run that command real quick. Again, make sure your token is highlighted and Boom, there we go. Grolf has been summoned one square above. Now the spawn command can also work in a multi-line mode. So as the command gets more and more sophisticated, which it will throughout the course of this video, we may want to break this up so it's not one continuous line just going on into infinity. So what I'm going to do instead is be using this syntax where we have the spawn command and then these double curly braces and then within the double curly braces are those same parameters. We're just going to add to the parameters being used here, and that'll allow us to do more sophisticated things. But basically what I'm going to do right now is just create additional spawn commands for the other members in my party. So it's actually going to look like this, where I have a spawn command for each party member. So here's Cassandra, Grolf, and Grenda Fireforge. So now I'm just going to copy this. All right, we'll get rid of Grolf's original token here. We'll go into the chat box. Again, make sure that your token is highlighted. Run the command and boom, now all of my party has been spawned onto the board. Now, let's take this a step further, right? Because it's kind of a pain to put a D12 out on the board, select it, click the button, right? So to really speed this up, what we're gonna do is go into the journal tab and we're gonna create a character here called spawn party. And we'll save that. Okay. And on the spawn party attributes and abilities, what we're going to do is say add. And we're going to give this a name. We're going to call it spawn party. I'm going to paste in my spawn command. Save that. And we're going to show this as a token action. Let's go back to our battlefield here. I'm going to double click on the D12 token I set up originally. I'm going to say that represents 
the spawn party character. We'll save that. And then we're going to make that the default token. We'll save this. Okay, so now, close. If I delete this whole thing, delete all these tokens, right? I'm going to drag spawn party onto the map, click him, spawn, boom, done. Real quick and easy to get your whole party onto the board. So now when you are setting up a new map, you can just drag your spawn party character out onto the board, click the spawn party button, and then delete them, and you're done. Okay, so next up, let's talk about summoning monsters. And let's say that our necromancer here wants to summon a bunch of skeletons, like so. In order for this to work, we need to make sure that the skeleton is in our game already. It's already in our journal. If you try to summon a monster that isn't in your journal, then you're going to get an error message. That's the prerequisite to summoning any monster. Make sure that it's already in your journal. So here's the code for this one. We start out, again, it's the spawn command with the name of skeleton. And you'll notice how I'm using this quantity parameter. And that's where we define how many of the creature or, or character or whatever that we're summoning. And in this example, I'm summoning eight. And we're also using this placement parameter, which is what's used to define how the tokens will be placed around the selected token. So I'm not using the offset flag here. I'm using placement surround, which means it's putting the spawned creatures in a ring around the selected token. And there are other values you can use for placement. There's like burst or cross. I'll give a link in the description to where you can view the documentation for this script, which will give a list of all the possible values you can put for these various parameters. Okay, so I've cleared out my skeletons. Let's spawn something else. Let's spawn something bigger because we can also control the size of the token that's being summoned. So for example, let's say our necromancer wants to summon up an ogre zombie. Well, those are large size. So by default, the script is going to make your tokens that are spawned one square big, which is a medium creature. But we want the ogre to come in large. So what we're going to do is use code like this. Again, spawn, the name of the creature, ogre zombie. We just want one of them. I want them offset to the left of the selected token. And I'm going to say size 2, comma 2, which means I want the token that's being spawned to be two squares wide by two squares tall. So let's see how that looks. All right, I'm just going to copy this. We'll highlight our necromancer, plug in the command, and there we go. Now we have our large token that's been spawned in. If I summon this without that size parameter, if I just put that in again and I'm going to remove size, all right, and we'll, we'll scoot this guy out of the way. You see, it spawns a mini ogre zombie, right? We don't want that. We, we want the full size one. So by using that size parameter, we can control how big the token is when it gets summoned in. Lastly, let's summon a spell effect. So conjuration spells can summon weapons and other useful items onto the battlefield, and dragging tokens for those items out onto the board can get to be a pain. But luckily, spawn default token can do that for us too. Now, before I get into this, there is one thing to know about spawning artwork from the API. And this is not unique to the spawn default token script. No API script can access artwork that's coming from the Roll20 marketplace. So if you have purchased artwork, like I have this Weapons of Magic from Norse Foundry, these items can't be used directly in a summons. And the way you can tell is just drag the item onto the battlefield, click on it, press Z, and then right click and say copy image address, and then paste that address into notepad. And if you see the word marketplace in the URL, like right here, that means you will not be able to call it directly from the API. What you're gonna need to do is right click again, say save image as, save the item locally, so I'll just call this say gauntlets, and then upload that into your art library. So we'll just go all the way up to the top again here. I'm gonna click on my library, we'll say upload, and then I'm just gonna drag the gauntlets on here. Okay, upload is complete. It shows up in my recently added items here. Now I can use it in the script. So that's just one thing you're going to want to be mindful of as you're setting these things up. 
Just make sure that the artwork is available to you. So if it has that word marketplace in the URL, copy it into your library before you try to do anything else that will save you a lot of pain and aggravation later. Okay, so what we're going to do now is create a spell effect that will summon in this dagger right here. I want to spawn that onto the board. I want to have it hit one of the player characters. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is set up a rollable token. And I've already done that down here called Magic Weapons. And you can see it's just the rollable token with the dagger. Again, using the artwork that I uploaded to my own library. That's important. So I've created that rollable table. If you're not sure, if you haven't done this before, basically you just click the rollable table button here, say add item, and then drag the artworks. So like I'll do that right now for uh, the gauntlet that I just set up. Just drag it right on. There it goes. Okay, and I'd call that gauntlet. Okay. Save changes. All right. So I have the magic weapons here with my dagger. Save that. And now what I need to do is create a character sheet for these items that are being summoned onto the battlefield. So you can't just summon something from a table. You can't just summon a piece of art. You can only summon or spawn things that actually have character sheets that are in your journal here. And as you can see, I've already created one called Magic Weapons. That's what I was using in the intro of this video. But let's make another one right now so you can see how that works. I'm going to start out here. I'm going to say Add Character. And I'll be extremely creative and call this Magic Weapons 2. We'll save the changes for that. And I'm just going to minimize this by double-clicking on the name. We'll just tuck that aside. We're going to be going back to that in a minute. Let's head back to our Rollable Table section here. We're going to go Token. All right, that spawns on our token. And what I'm going to do is double click on the newly spawned token. And I'm going to say that this represents character Magic Weapons 2. Okay, we'll save the settings. We'll go back to our character sheet. And we're going to say edit. And we'll say use selected token. So you can see I've got that weapon token still selected. So use selected token, which means now we've just set that multi-sided token with the weapons as the default token for this character sheet. So we will now be able to spawn in Magic Weapons 2. So we're gonna save changes to that. We'll minimize the character sheet. We'll be going back into it again in a minute. And now let's take a look at the code to actually summon this token onto the battlefield. All right, so here's the code. And this looks very similar to what we've done before. We start out with the spawn command, we've got the name, the quantity, but we've got two new parameters here. Targets means we're going to specify where on the board we want this item to be summoned. So I'm going to be able to pick which of my PCs is going to get hit by this spell. And then also side one means I want to use the first side of the multi-sided token that we're spawning in here. So if I wanted to you know, bring in the second side, it would be side two, side three, and, and so on. So let's go ahead, let's start with this. So I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to highlight my necromancer. We'll paste in the code. And you see now we get a message in the chat saying to select our target. So we're going to say select targets. We're going to hit Grolf. And you can see that the dagger has spawned on top of Grolf. We can attack multiple targets if we want. So if I delete the dagger here, we'll just get rid of that. And I'm going to put that code in again. And this time around, what I'm going to do is say targets Two. We'll highlight the necromancer, run the command. There we go. Select target. Okay, so target one is Grolf. Pick two. Target two will be Cassandra. And you can see they both get daggers summoned on top of them. So you can target multiple characters as you're going along when you want to summon items in like that. So again, we're just going to get rid of those. So now let's take this a step further. Let's say that when these daggers appear, we want there to be a special effect. So for that, we can add another parameter to the command here called fx. And we're going to say we want a burst of magic. So we're going to say fx burst dash magic. And again, there's a complete list of all the different effects types available in the link to the scripts documentation that I'm going to provide. But essentially what's going to happen now is we're going to run this and we should see a burst of magic appear when the dagger gets spawned. So let's do that. We'll copy this again. We'll highlight our necromancer, paste this in. And, all right, we'll select our target, Grolf. And there we go. We get a burst of magic as the dagger spawns in. 
But now let's take that a step even further. Let's say that in addition to automatically spawning the token and having the special effect, we also want some sort of attack to occur. So, or maybe Grolf is getting hit automatically for a certain amount of damage when this spell comes in. So we can actually do that. What I'm going to do is go into my Magic Weapons 2 character sheet. I'm going to go to Attributes and Abilities, and I'm just going to create a new ability here, and I'm just going to call this ability Dagger Damage. All right, so we cast this spell, and it automatically deals a certain amount of damage to the character. And let's say that it's going to do, like Cloud of Daggers, for example. It'll be 4d4 plus 4. So we'll add that to the character sheet as an ability, and we'll show that as a token action as well. Okay, so minimize this guy. And now what I can do is have the script automatically invoke that ability from the Magic Weapons character sheet. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say dash dash sheet Magic Weapons 2 and dash dash ability dagger damage. So now we copy all this. All right, we'll delete the original token. Highlight our necromancer, paste in the command, press enter. We're going to target Grolf, who is having a very bad day. And you can see we got the token summoned in, we had the special effect, and the damage has automatically been rolled. So let's go back to that for a minute. This sheet is important because that's specifying which sheet has the ability that you want to call. By default, it's going to use whatever the selected token is. And because this Necromancer doesn't have a dagger damage ability on their character sheet, this would fail otherwise. So we need to spell out which character sheet we're calling the ability from. But that gives us now some great flexibility to automatically invoke damage, to invoke other abilities, maybe invoke saving throws, you know, anything else that you could normally do through an ability can now be performed automatically when the summon occurs. And because we made that damage a token action, if Grolf stays in this space, we can just have dagger damage get rolled again when it's that dagger's turn. So really handy ability in this script to be able to invoke abilities from given character sheets. So that's everything I wanted to cover today for the spawn default token script. As you can see, it's a very versatile, powerful script. And again, I've put the link to its documentation down in the description. You should go check that out. It is available as part of the one-click install in the Roll20 script library. So you can just grab it, throw it into your game, and be off and running. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, thanks for watching and have a great day.